Hey guys, this is Phil with the Gun Owners of America. Today we have a really interesting interview for you with our Director of Federal Affairs, Aiden Johnston. Be sure to stick around to the end as Aiden discusses our chances at defeating the egregious assaults from Joe Biden's ATF. Make sure you comment as you watch and let us know what you're thinking. Here's Aiden. Now at the same time, the press release also offers guidance, i.e. pressure, on states on how to draft and enact their own red flag laws. So join me now to discuss this and more is Aiden Johnston, the Federal Affairs Director for Gun Owners of America. Thanks for being here tonight, Aiden. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Grace, your organization says it's committed to fighting against this unlawful regulation, which is currently in its 90-day public comment phase of this whole process. So what are some of your biggest concerns with the proposed rule on pistol braces? Joe Biden's ATF says that this affects about 3 million gun owners, but a recent congressional research survey shows that uh, there are upwards of 10 to 40 million of these pistol braces out there. These are absolutely commonly owned firearm accessories, and the Biden administration wants to tell those law-abiding American citizens who purchase their their firearms and their firearm accessories at a local gun store in complete accordance with the law that they should either destroy or register those guns or turn them into the, the uh, ATF, which is a completely unacceptable ultimatum. Yeah, you're exactly um, right. And, and Biden, we heard Biden remember uh, just a few weeks ago, he was saying that there none of our rights in the Constitution, though they are God given. Biden was saying that none of them are absolute, which was very terrifying talk to hear uh, from Biden, the person who's supposed to be le the leader of the free world. So to hear him say that none of your rights are, are completely absolute was quite concerning. But when it comes down to it, we hear from the Justice Department, we heard them put out their statement and they said this is all done in the name of safety. Well, what's your response to that? I mean, that's an absolutely disgusting way to refer to Americans' constitutionally protected rights. Um, these, uh, the, the ATF referred to uh, these types of firearms as being used by gangsters. And I don't think that uh, 40 million law-abiding citizens, uh, you know, own gangster, uh, uh, are gangsters or own gangster-style weapons. I mean, uh, there's a, just an absolute disregard for our Second Amendment rights. Um, and uh, we're, we're prepared to fight this in the, in the courts. So uh, there's a... Uh, there's a 90-day comment period that will be initiated very soon. At the very end of the Administrative Procedures Act, Gun Owners of America plans to file a lawsuit and to fight back. And, and honestly, the ATF is really overreaching here. So uh, we look forward to, to that fight. I know it's so concerning to hear all this. It seems like it's coming so fast. And at the same time, we hear David Chipman, of course, he's been nominated by Biden. There's been some back and forth on his confirmation to lead ATF. Do you think with everything that we're hearing now with this new, these new proposed regulations, that it makes it more, even more imperative for, for gun right advocate groups to, to help block Chipman's nomination? That is 100% right. David Chipman, when he was working for the Giffords Law Center, wrote a proposal called Legal and Lethal, Nine Products That Could Be the Next Bump Stock. One of those items was short-barreled shotguns, including, uh, or, or was Mossberg Shockwave and other, uh, another uh, pistol shotguns um, that uh, he wanted to regulate as uh, short-barreled shotguns, and that's included in this list. So one of those items, uh, you know, David Chipman can just cross that right off of his list. Number nine on that list is actually detachable magazines. So what he's saying there is that because uh, a machine gun is something that uh, fires more than one round uh, without reloading. And he's saying that if you add a, a 30 round magazine to uh, any firearm, you basically don't have to reload. Therefore, it's an illegal machine gun. And there's a there's no way to there's it'd be a complete ban with no immediate grandfather uh, possible. So that's the kind of uh, ATF director that, that Joe Biden's nominated. That's uh, exactly what Joe Biden wants his ATF to do. And uh, here we have uh, his ATF already taking cues uh, from the Biden playbook or from the uh, David Chipman playbook. And of course, if this if this does get enacted, this proposed rule change when it comes to these braces, a lot of manufacturers, a lot of gun manufacturers were speaking out saying that, that they've sold millions of these braces in the first place. And because the the, the proposed rule itself, it, it's quite convoluted. It's quite it, it's hard to know exactly which ones would be legal, and which ones would not be legal. And I think part of that's baked into the cake so that a lot of these manufacturers find themselves perhaps in litigation and in other issues. And do you think that's a backdoor way that Democrats try and push through or ram through gun control, it's that they use these more cir circuitous routes, that they don't go straight to the heart like Beto O'Rourke tried to do, but they try and go through the back door. They try and they try and crush manufacturers, for example. Do you think that's a back door that they're trying to use right now? That's absolutely right and, and absolutely true. Uh, the, the Congress was very clear when it passed the statutes defining what a rifle is, what a handgun is, what a short-barreled rifle is, and this uh, new ATF rule adds a three-section test and like section one prerequisites knocks out 
mo like about half of uh, pistol braces that are currently on the market. Section two knocks out the pretty much the rest of them. And section three says that if you put a scope, different types of scopes or flip up sights on your pistol rifle, that that's a sign that it was designed as an SBR and not exactly a, uh, a pistol braced AR-15. Um, at one point, uh, it, Congress defines a rifle as something that's designed or redesigned, manufactured or remanufactured and intended. And one of the, a direct quote from this ATF rule is, regardless of the manufacturer's stated intent. They are disregarding Congress's statute in order to ban upwards of, of 10 to 40 million uh, lawfully purchased, lawfully owned firearms that are in the homes of everyday Americans. It's a complete government overreach. And at the same time, from the same press release, we also saw the, the DOJ. And they were, they were putting some pressure on these states, on different states, to start implementing more and more uh, red flag laws is what they're, they're uh, pushing for right now. What are some, your, some of your concerns with that? There's nothing new about Joe Biden's uh, red flag uh, proposal. Let's call it what it is. It's a national gun confiscation program proposal. And I can't think of a better way to implement a ban on 10 to 40 million AR-15s than, uh, than a national gun confiscation program. And as you're saying, you are pursuing litigation, perhaps, if we see this become enacted. And when we look at it, we, we've seen some, some recent victories when it comes to Second Amendment rights. For example, here in California, we just had a federal judge. He struck down a law banning so-called assault weapons here in our state. And we also recently saw the Supreme Court issued a unanimous 9-0 ruling in Cornelia versus Strom when it comes to the ability for, for law enforcement to take guns without, without warrants, for, without going through the courts for so do you think with some of these these cases now under our belts, do you think that gun rights groups, Second Amendment groups actually are can feel optimistic about their their chance at litigation? You know, I'm, ca I'm cautiously optimistic about our chances against both these uh, proposed rules from the ATF that uh, Joe Biden uh, has initiated. Uh, we just won our, our case in the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals on a three-judge panel known currently as Gun Owners of America versus Garland. That's our bump stock case where uh, the bump stocks were arbitrarily banned just like the ATF is trying to do with uh, pistol braces right now. And uh, what the court said was you can't do that. A, pist a bump stock is not a machine gun. And also you can't uh, arbitrarily reinterpret a statute that has criminal implications. So we are very confident with, uh, with, that, um, uh, with that precedent that we've just set. And I, I hope that uh, the courts will apply that to what the ATF is doing now and we'll be able to strike that down. And have you been feeling a lot more grassroots enthusiasm behind a lot of behind gun owners of America and some of these other gun rights groups? Because we see, you know, we see Democrats are pursuing this this rabid, radical gun control agenda, yet the numbers don't match because we're seeing uh, average Americans are actually buying guns at, at historic levels, record highs right now, especially when we've seen Democrats handicapping our police officers and, and, and really tying their hands behind their backs. So a lot of Americans feel like they have to protect themselves by using a, a their own God-given rights. So do you feel a lot of grassroots enthusiasm as well to fight back against this agenda? That's absolutely, I, I agree. Uh, I, I, we definitely have seen that. Uh, for the last year, we've seen our cities uh, across the country burning every night and Americans went out and they purchased firearms for, and they decided I'm gonna take my own self-defense seriously. We've definitely seen an increase in, in, in memberships and grassroots activism from these new gun owners, from gun owners who, who previously may have thought that their rights were really about you know, hunting or sports, but really their rights are about self-defense and the preservation of liberty in our country. Uh, so yes, we, we've definitely seen an increase in, uh, in grassroots support. Aiden, thank you for everything that you're doing with Gun Owners of America. And thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you very much.